So what are the works you're showing in Poland? The starting point is Ted Hughes' poem, Thrushes. The part about the shark being compared to Mozart. And uh, part of the reason to show it in Poland now is that uh, because of Damien Hirst being in the show, and he's the, probably is an art reference and sharks, he's probably the one that immediately <laughs> springs to mind. But it's, the, it's more about my attraction to the poem, that section is where he describes Mozart's method as being shark-like. So having an instinct which is, makes the most direct route towards something. And I suppose an ongoing interest in the parameters that artists have that they set up in their studios and the methods that they use. And, and that just being quite an interesting uh, analogy, I thought. Do you use uh, kind of literature, literary references a lot in your work? Um, is that quite often a uh, kind of catalyst? or? It has been more, though, for structuring things. So the way that uh, I say, uh, yes, yeah, the way that some, uh, a bit of text or a poem or something has been structured. And so I often use Dante, which I'm not in any way Dante expert or anything. And I actually use the first canto of the inferno sort of first thing you get to in a poem but as a, when he describes being lost in a wood and being disoriented and how he needs to uh he's reached his mid it's sort of his midlife crisis moment is a way of sort of reading it and that at that time he has to go round it in some way and I've often thought that that could be a good way of thinking about a room that's full of objects. That when you go into it as a viewer, you're in a sort of crisis-like state, of not really knowing what everything is, but also the way that you might walk around and look at things. So, um, but it's a very, it's a kind of maybe use literature in a very light way. The idea of considering the viewer uh, mm. from kind of the start or from the onset, um, you kind of see how uh, you scale things up. And they're only, I mean, they're scaled up uh, in relation to real life, but they're also scaled up and kind of gigantic compared to the viewer or the mm. viewer's perspective. Um, so is, is the person looking a kind of like very considered aspect that you kind of project as to how they're going to feel? I think maybe I've been very influenced by dream sequences and films. I think it's something to do with using an, a, an odd scale for something to suggest that you're looking at a kind of state of mind or something as a almost like a Hollywood technique of making things a bit weird. What's your interest in biographies? You kind of make these sculptural renditions of celebrity biographies. Uh, where did that come from and what, what are they about? Yeah. <laughs> well, the first one was the Michael Johnson one who was in the Hayward show. And uh, that was given to me, the real book was given to me genuinely by a friend who actually loves the book. So it's self-help self literature. But he sort of talks a lot about um, parenting in it. And I think all of the self-help books use that in some way. As if they're a kind of stand-in for people who haven't had good parenting. So a lot of it's common sense and planning and all those sorts of things. But he, uh, But the reason it was used in that show was because I was using him as a as a Virgil character as a source of guidance mm -hmm. and advice and uh, and also the contrast in that that he's putting himself across as this figure of support but on the cover he's kind of glistening sweat beaded <laughs> torso you know and, and one of the most successful sprinters and athletes there's ever been you know multi-millionaire sort of very, you know, you can't really get more successful. So I just was imagining people who were actually in a, you know, again, in a state of crisis, reaching out for something. And <laughs> what they reach for is this sort of superhuman who then is, you know, saying, well, I understand this is how you go about it. They're kind of celebrities. And uh, there's kind of links with this consumption, this idea of consumption 
seems to run through your work. So you've mm. used kind of quite uh, emblematic fashion items or sculptural versions yeah. of emblematic fashion items. Uh, baseball cap uh, kind of originally comes from hip hop uh, fashion yeah. or rap fashion rather. Um, so how there's this idea of kind of consuming popular culture, uh, but how how political is that? Is that? I don't think it is a. I think no. I never sort of make a definitive answer on anything, which is probably that's like standard artist way. Like everything has a modal, like mm. attempting, aiming to <laughs> might be. You know, so I think. I don't ever really express an opinion. I think it's quite interesting that what's assumed by using those things, the, the response to it, uh, the assumptions about what I might be doing, and especially with the baseball cap, I think with that piece, I just wanted, I just needed something that was the same shape as a, as a brain. Yeah. And I didn't want to make a kind of prop brain. So I was using the baseball cap to just to hold the painting of the brain, basically. It was just a structural device. I don't think I give the things status in their content necessarily. Like, they have status more maybe in scale or how they're presented in some way, like materially, sculpturally, they have status. But, and I don't think I'm saying that the Truman Show is as interesting as Dante or vice versa. It's just that the way that these, the way that I have access to these things is in a similar way, or that it's possible to find both things interesting, so then they can be in the same show. You know, that I genuinely find the, the uh, you know, the pop culture as interesting as the literature references. Maybe we can talk about the kind of formal aspect.